We just spent some time learning how to work with objects in state. But what about collections of data? In this lesson, we'll learn how to work with arrays in state. We'll create a new file called todolist.jsx and scaffold a basic component. Export const todo list is equal to an arrow function that returns a div tag todo list. For our to-do list, we'll keep an array of items in state. So at the top, import useState from React and invoke useState within the component. As the initial value to useState, we will pass an array of objects with ID and text properties. So array of two objects. The first object has ID set to one and text learn React. The second object has ID set to two and text build an app. USTATE returns two values and we will use array destructuring to call them items and the function set items. Now let's display these tasks. Within the div tag, an ordered list, curly braces, items dot map, we pass in a callback function. The function gets access to each item in the list and we will return a list item that renders item.text with the key prop set to item.id. Remember from our earlier lessons, always include a key prop when rendering lists. Let's also include a console log so we can see when our component re-renders. Console log rendering with items and then the items array. Import this component in app.jsx. So import to do list from dot slash to do list and invoke the component. Save the files, check the browser, and we see our two initial items learn React and build an app. The styling is off, but that's okay. Now let's add a way to add new items to the list. Back in to do list dot JSX, we will create an add item function. So const add item is equal to arrow function. And within the function body, first we create a new item object with a unique ID and text. So const new item is an object with ID set to date.now, so it's unique, and text deploy to production. Then we add it to the end of the items array. Now you might be tempted to just push the new item directly to array with items.push new item, but remember what we learned with objects and use state in general. We need to use the setter function to trigger a re-render. Directly modifying the array with items.push will not work because React will not know something changed and re-render the component. So call set items, pass in a new array, but first we use the spread operator to create a new array with the existing items so dot 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 items array and then we add the new item very straightforward let's add a button to our jsx to call the add item function after the unordered list button the text is add item and on click we call the add item function save the file and back in the browser when we click add item the new item appears deploy to production. Now we can also write this using the concat method. So set items, passing in items.concat new item. As long as you're passing a new array to set items, React will know something changed and trigger a re-render. Next, let's add the ability to remove items. We'll add a delete button to each item. So within list item, after item.text button element, the text is delete. On click, we pass a function where we call another function remove item passing in the item's ID. Let's go ahead and define remove item. Const remove item is a function that receives the item ID. And here we call set items to update our items state and we pass items.filter which accepts a callback function 
it receives the current item in iteration. And in the function body, we check that item.id is not equal to the passed in ID. Let me repeat what's happening in simpler words. We call the remove item function with the ID of the item we want to delete. In the remove item function, we use the filter method to create a new array containing only the items where the condition is true. In this case, all items except the one we are deleting. Filter returns a new array back to set items, which will trigger a re-render. Let's test this. Refresh, add item, deploy to production, click delete, and the item is removed perfectly. All right, now that we know how to add and delete items, let's understand how to update items. Let's add a done status to our to-dos. First, we'll modify our initial state. Every object has a property done set to false. And then when we add new items, they should also have this property done set to false. Now let's create a function to toggle the done status. So const toggle done also gets access to the item ID. We call set items, passing in items.map, which receives a callback function. The callback function gets the item in iteration. If item.id is equal to the passed in ID, we return an object with the existing item properties, but done set to not of item.done. So we are toggling the done status. Otherwise, we return the item. So we're using map to create a completely new array. For each item, we check if it's the one we want to update. If it is, we create a new object using the spread operator and flip the done property. If it's not the item we are looking for, we just return it unchanged. Let's update our JSX to show when tasks are completed. We'll wrap item.text with a span tag and we'll add some styles. Text decoration. If item.done is true, we'll have line through. Otherwise, there's no text decoration. We'll also add a button after the text to toggle the done value. For the text, if item.done is true, the text will render undo, otherwise done. On click of the toggle button, we call toggle done, passing item.id. Let's save the file and test this out. Refresh. We have learn react, done and delete, mark it as done, and we see a strike through. Click undo, and it's a new to do again. We have successfully used the use state hook with arrays. Let me summarize what we've learned. The key takeaway here is that arrays in state work just like objects. Always use the setter function to update state as changing the array directly won't trigger a re-render. Use the spread operator or concat to add items, filter to remove items, and map to update items. This immutable approach might feel like extra work at first, but it's what makes React fast and predictable.